Well, it's official. Kershaw just nuked everyone's 2023 pocket knife wish list with the release of their Duralock series. To say it's cold out here would be an understatement, but the nice thing is you can easily manipulate this one with leather gloves on. Oh, guys. Ah! Here's my super scientific stabbing test. <laughs> Two levels of strap. Groundbreaking new test. Ooh, I like that. And I am super pumped to be able to break down with you four unique models of this series. And we're gonna kick things right off with the, what I feel is the workhorse of the family with the heist. Now there's a few reasons. You may go, well, why would you consider it a workhorse? One, it freaking lifts the heavy loads of general utility that you expect out of a knife. Now all this is achieved with that blade shape, amazing leaf shape design there on D2 steel. And it's gonna be pretty slicey as you have seen because it, back there by the thumb studs, we're looking at 0 0.08 on the thickness and it keeps that all the way to the tip. And then it's got a really nice precise tip, but I was surprised stabbing into an ice blocked stump that it held up to some lateral uh, side to side as well as the piercing motion. So I was super pumped with that. Saber grind, um, I believe I said 3.2 inches overall. So it's a great size range to work with. And I'm really happy with the performance that I'm seeing with that. That goes right into the phosphorus bronze washers that are on this model. Now, I love that because the rest of the four, the other three of the four that I have, are running on KVT ball bearings. Phosphorus bronze washers are excellent for outdoor and heavy use where you're going to be in grime, gunk, and, and you know junk. Uh, they don't collect grime and dirt as much. They're easy to work with and easier to clean. And so that, and it cuts down on costs a little bit because this will be the most budget friendly of the line as well. So you don't feel as bad putting it through its paces. So all those factors really um, help it to excel, but that means that it's still nice and smooth. You can see there that Duralock, at this point, nothing, you know, like, whoa, mind blowing, except the fact that it's the, the, the knife that it is on and the knives that we're about to see that it is on. What I like is that the action is nice and springy. I don't know what springs they are using on there. We got a good size stop bar and the crossbar lock that the Duralock uses is good. And then obviously that ambidextrous, you can whip it out, close it without even touching the blade, obviously. So excellent in that regard. Good lock up, up and down. We definitely have a little wobble side to side, but you're gonna get that with about half of the crossbar locks that are out there on the market. So guys, I've gotta pause here for a second and bring in new information for the pricing of these blades. Originally, when I made the video, I only had MSRP. I now have information about the street price and it is crazy what Kershaw, <laughs> what these are going for street value compared to even MSRP. MSRP on the heist is 84 99 you know, 85 bucks. Uh, these are going for, when I checked on Blade HQ on release day, $55 for the heist. $55 for the heist is really remarkable for what we are seeing is the capabilities and material, you know, and what it can do. So that is excellent. Now on this model as well, it's gonna be light. 2.8 ounces, gang. Awesome for this size of blade. Coming in at 4.4 inches overall on glass reinforced nylon textured handle scales with liners in there, flow through construction, ambidextrous with loop over deep ride pocket clip with recessed screws. So, I mean, the fact of all of this stuff going together, filling out the hand well, giving you the texture that you're looking for and want, and just they're, they're, they're executing this so nicely. I mean, I'm so pleased with what I'm seeing. Now, before I go any further in the video, I gotta give a big shout out to today's sponsor, which is LA Police Gear. Now, I've been so glad to have LA Police Gear as a regular sponsor here at the channel for going on two years, and I'm glad to regularly partner with them because of the massive variety of really well-established gear that myself and many of you use on a daily basis, giving you and me, the user, reliable gear to choose from, regardless if it's a day at the range, our everyday carry systems that we're updating, 
or days in the backcountry on outdoor adventures. But LA Police Gear's own brand of gear and equipment also really excels. And I wanna highlight specifically the Terrain Stealth series of packs that I've recently tested out two of them and been very impressed with because you're getting a lot of capability for a budget-friendly price point. And it's hard to find all of the features as well as materials in models at this price point. You usually have to, to sacrifice many of those other key features or materials, but LA Police Gear is able to accomplish both and give us a really well-balanced messenger bag, sling bag, and backpack. So in the description box below, I will not only have a link over to LA Police Gear, but also my exclusive 10% off promo code for you, the viewers, that does work site-wide. And as an added bonus, LA Police Gear often does carry new Kershaws. So as these blades that we're looking at today become more available, you can go check those out and apply that coupon code as well. All right, now we're gonna move the hamburger meal out of the way, more accessible, but not as high class. And we're gonna go in the opposite direction to the steak dinner of the pocket knives that we're gonna be looking at, the Iridium. This is gonna be the largest of all three. This is gonna be the most expensive of all three and kind of the classiest. So you would take to a steak dinner to process your steak. And I love the blade shape because it's got that excellent swedging on top, very stabby. Now it's gonna be slightly thicker at 0.1 back there by the thumb studs and then it holds it basically all the way through. You got that swedge then into that tip that again, all really held up well. And then the D2 steel slicing through just about everything. This one is what looks to me to be a satin, whereas the heist was a stone wash. Now the handle scales are super cool because not only are they anodized aluminum, they are like a smoke from my model. I don't know if they're gonna have other color combinations with a bronze backspacer, just looks so good. I mean, this is a good looking blade, super good and then contoured. So it's not just like a flat slab, they're contoured slightly and I love it. All rounded, no sharp angles anywhere. 4.5 on the handle, fills out those hands really well. Plenty of real estate left to spare. Same pocket clip as on the heist, loop over deep ride, ambidextrous. And then again, the Duralock on those KVT ball bearing bushings for this model. So super smooth all day and really nice action. I, I really like the action. Now, something that I am noticing when we run it up against a Gertillion, and I will discuss that momentarily with some other competitive options, the Gertillion's honeycomb seems to be like one stack higher than what's on all of these Duralocks. So I haven't had any issues grabbing them, but they're a little more flush. In some ways that's better for EDC, less likely to snag it by accident, but you may slip off of it uh, if you got really fat hands, th fingers, or maybe with gloves. Now I did open and close the heist with gloves without any issue, uh, but that's something, just a data point. The honeycombing is slightly lower for the Duralock setup. Now the pricing for me continues to be jaw dropping, even with the Iridium. Uh, MSRP is $100. The street price that this is going for is about $65. That is crazy for just the, the machining, the, the material, the size, the action, you know, all of it, I, I'm really pleased. I'm, I, am, I, I knew it would be budget, but I didn't realize just how budget Kershaw was going to be able to release these to the market. I was literally sitting there like a couple weeks ago prior to knowing about these knives being released. And I was saying to myself, man, well, you know, you know who could do a really good budget friendly you know, sub hundred dollar crossbar style lock. I think Kershaw could really execute that well in that price range. That's kind of like their wheelhouse. And it wasn't shortly after that, that I get an email from Kershaw and they're like, hey, we're coming out with these designs. Are you interested in a few? I was like hundred percent. And I know these knives have just recently been announced. So I'll have links over to the Kershaw website so you, you can see all that they have to offer. And as they become more available through the affiliate networks that I regularly partner with, like Blade HQ, GP Knives, Smoky Mountain Knife Works, and Amazon, those links will also be in the description box below. So if one of these models makes sense for you, I do appreciate it when you use those hyperlinks. Now, I really like these next two. Both will have glass reinforced nylon handles, KVT ball bearings. 
Now what's different about these is they do not have thumb studs. And to my knowledge, I am not aware of another crossbar lock that uses finger flipper only as the deployment. SOG has a few that are thumb stud and finger flipper. Most companies do not do that because in order to make the function properly, you really have to have that flipper cage over your dura lock crossbar in a significant way and it just means that there's a lot more machining going on down in there so a lot of brands don't do that but i like that this has the, that kershaw has done that and they've changed up a lot of uniqueness so it looks very different or offered a lot of uniqueness it looks a lot different than the other two models which i love they're not just cranking out basically four models of very similar style you know this has different pocket clips they have different the other two are, you know, more satin and stonewashed. These are coated, you know, like th there's definitely variety and I like that. Still D2, KVT ball bearings, those Duralocks function great. Finger flippers on these. Reminds me a little bit of a zero tolerance actually, which is nice styling for sure. Cool little pivot accent there. And then very cool, we'll share the same pocket clip, which I like a little bit better. The flare isn't quite as crazy on them, less likely to scratch your vehicle. Uh, ambidextrous, you can unscrew it, swap it over, blacked out, very, very cool, and excellent deep ride. So, I mean, well thought out. And the pricing continues to be an outstanding factor with both of these flipper designs coming again at about $55 on average, even though the MSRP is about 90 bucks. Now, just for some food for thought, the first thing that I would love to see is American-made blades with this Duralock. I think if they followed suit and kind of did what they did with the launch series, I believe this is the launch one that I have here. I love this auto, but some people just don't like autos or, you know, can't own them on the state or, you know, country that they live in. So literally if this knife had this crossbar lock, I think they would sell like hotcakes. And if it came in at the same price, I love the CPM uh, 154. It's good. This, this blade's like, I think 120. Most of the launch series are some of the cheapest American made with good steel autos out there. I have several and I love them. So I would love to see that moving into the middle to maybe end of the year. That would be so cool. And to keep about the same price, you know, like 120, because then the, those would absolutely compete with like the Gerber Sedulo, S30V, 125 to 135, you know, good option. Um, but in many ways, I would say refinement wise, the launch and knives like the launch are a little bit more refined. And uh, I really like this Duralock, so uh, as a, just another variety. And when we look at these, particularly think of like the heist in comparison to that Sedulo, I mean, you're looking at about half the cost almost, potentially. And then if we look at like the, one of the knives that basically started it all, the, the full-size Griptilian, yes, S30V, uh, this is like 145 currently in early 2023. I mean, these knives are half, if not even more so, potentially the cost of this blade. Yes, of course, American made D, uh, S30V is a better steel, but uh, th there's just a lot that these have to offer. And then more as like a uh, closer competitor, here's the SOG TAC, great blade, very slicey, D2 steel, made in China, um, G10 handle scales, ambidextrous, flipper and thumb studs, but this is a, a like twice the weight. This is like a five and a half ounce knife, very thick, beefy, bulky, designed for a tactical blade. These are definitely more EDC friendly, about $80, you know, so that's just something kind of that they're offering something even unique to the overseas produced line with these uh, Duralocks that I have here and are definitely gonna outperform knives like I just tested recently, the SRM uh, 9211. You know, yeah, it's like, you know, 25-ish bucks, but it's ATR 13 MOV, the handle scales shift, the pivot springs are nowhere near as smooth, Teflon bushings, um, you know, not ambidextrous. So there it is, Kershaw coming in swinging for 2023 with the Dura Lock, and I'm excited to see what other models come down the line. I think they have, for this initial feeling, really executed this well and given us budget-friendly but still quality in these crossbar style of locks. Uh, that they're offering. And let me know in the comments below what your favorite of these four models are that you would be most interested in, that you connect with the most. If you have other ideas, always appreciate the comments below. And I invite you to check out the other video popping up and to subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.